I tell them straight If it ain't about Jesus, it ain't fulfilling Nah I needed something that'll take the pain and kill it. Yo. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Truth, and this is episode number three. Well, I'm doing this podcast, and I really hope that it's been an encouragement to you guys. But today I have a special guest. This is my boy. This is Anthony, and I've been wanting him to be on a podcast type environment with me just because you know how you have some people that keep it real. But you know you got those people that keep it really real. <laughs> this is this this is the guy. So his link will be down in my description section. He has a YouTube, IG, Facebook called Dangerous Doctrine, and um, he just shares God's word. You know what? I'm gonna let him explain. What what tell tell the people what Dangerous Doctrine is. All right. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, man. This is I'm um, I'm looking forward to. It. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. So yeah. Dangerous Doctrine is just opportunities to connect with the word of God. And I title it Dangerous Doctrine because the Christian faith is not meant to be safe, it's meant to be radical, it's meant to be life-changing. And so the things that we read in this Bible will change your whole life. And it's important to address spiritual things properly. It's not always Absolutely. comfortable, nope. it's not always easy, but it's important to make sure we let the word of God speak for itself. So I titled it Dangerous Doctrine. You'll find all sorts of Bible studies. You'll find different uh, just kind of thoughts and inspiration, encouragement. A lot of stuff is in the live section on YouTube, but there's a lot of good content. Hopefully uh, it's meant to encourage and be a blessing. Absolutely. So make sure y'all go down in the description section. If you're listening on any podcast platform, um, like I said, he streams it. You can listen to it um, on, I think it's Sundays, yep. mostly. Um, but everything will be down in my description section, regardless of what facet you're watching this or listening to this video. Now, today we're going to be talking about something that um, I feel like is much needed. Because we all go through different things in our lives where life can be lifing and yeah. situations can happen and times can be hard. So we have those situations where we just look at people sometimes and we're like, what did you say? Mm -hmm. Like, why did you, did you really just say that, yeah. right? Yeah. So when we think about that, I want to take it down to the avenue in the context of whenever you lose someone. Typically, everybody wants to do what whenever that happens? They want to... Yeah, they want to try and console you. They want to try and encourage you. They want to kind of give you a word that's supposed to, yeah. to lift you up. Yeah. And um, it, it definitely doesn't always do that. Yeah. So they all, they want to do that in a couple of the things. What we're going to do is we're going to hit a couple of these things. The most popular sayings that people normally say whenever it comes down to um, trying to just really comfort people and be there for people. Let's say we're in a funeral setting. Yeah. And someone comes up to us and they say something along the lines of, they are in a better place. Have you ever heard that before? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And what, and, and have you, okay, let me ask you this. Have you ever said those words to someone before? That's a great question. Um, yes, I have. I have said that And before. when you said those words to the, to, when you said those words, did you at the time feel like that that was a, bad thing to say no i was trying to encourage somebody okay i was okay. trying to to be a blessing and, and give them some comfort okay in what i was saying so so as as when did when did you start thinking to yourself like man i don't know if that's the best choice of words to say to someone who just who was going through the grieving process so to maybe even back up just a little bit I'm not sure it's always true. I've okay. known some people okay. who have <laughs> passed away. Uh huh. Let's talk about it now. And they weren't living that life where, based upon what I read in my Bible, mm -hmm. that they would be in a better place. Mm -hmm. so, so, so basically what you're saying is, is that we take this out of context assuming that that person is going to heaven and yes. not hell. Right. And see, that's the thing. I feel like people don't understand that there is a heaven mm -hmm. and there is very much a hell. Yes. And you're going to go one or the other. Yeah. 
It's not going to be, you no know, this paradise in between where you're just going to chill out. No, you're going to go here or there. So when I tell, when somebody passes away and I hear those words, I've said, I'm guilty. I've said it plenty of times. I even find myself, you know, having to tell myself, Jeremy, don't do that. Don't tell him that. Because not not just not just from the context of it, it, whether or not I know how they live their lives, mm-hmm. but it's just from the context of also, man, for me grieving, I don't want to be reminded that it's better that they're not here with me. Right, right. You know? <laughs> it, can, it can really do a lot of damage. It can be very hurtful. And so step one, I think, is are you even listening to yourself? Okay. Because so often we can we can say these platitudes, you know, we can say these things as though we've somehow helped. You're like, hey man, your your, your loved one's in a better place. Now I feel better about myself. Yeah. I pat on the so, back. Exactly. Now I can go home and man. Right. I helped I them did out. My duty. We good. You know, <laughs> yeah. like I I saw somebody on the side of the road and I helped them change a tire. Like, okay, boom, all right, now I changed your tire. You, you should be better off now. You can go <laughs> on about your way. Yeah. So I told you your loved one's in a better place. Now, you, now you're going to be better off. You can go on about your day. You, that just may not be the case. Mm. That may mm. not be the case. So first of all, they may not have been living that life. Mm. And it may not line up with any sense of morality. I've seen preachers preach the biggest heathen, the, the biggest rebel, who don't want anything to do with God. They preach them right on into heaven. And they're sitting here saying stuff. And they're like, you know, he was a good person. I'm like, no, he wasn't. But that, that, first <laughs> yeah. of all, that's just not true. Yeah. yeah. So now here's the other part. I'm a preacher who's had to preach a eulogy before. And it's real tempting to want to say all of these nice, comforting things. Yeah. But I got to stick to the truth. Mm. And so I can't tell people, oh, we know he he's he- he's in heaven. He's doing this. I don't know that. Yeah, I, I hope I pray, mm-hmm. but I don't know that. I cannot say that for sure. So step one, make sure I know what I'm saying. And I think that's so important for everyone to like listen to yourself. Think it through. What What is even your goal? Yeah. With what you're saying. So, yeah. That, and that may not be. A comfort. Let's say they are based upon everything we read in the Bible. Someone who's lived that godly life and they have a reward waiting for them. That still may not be a comfort. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, even even if we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that that Anthony is has has lived a righteous life, Anthony is waiting for his reward in heaven. We know this, and. I'm having to go to your wife and provide some type of comforting words. The last thing that I should be saying to her is, is that he is better off not being here with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and again, it, I think you need to know the person. You need to know how this is going to, to hit. Because some people that might be. That Mm -hmm. might be a big encouragement Mm -hmm. and you might even hear them say it first. Mm -hmm. You know, I know they're in a better place and that might be the comfort that they need. But for a there's different types of losses. So a loss that's out of order. Mm -hmm. You know, when you lose someone who's younger than you, if you ever lose a not you, man. Yeah. if, If somebody ever loses a child. Yeah. That's not how that's supposed to go. Yeah. You're not supposed to outlive your kids. And so there's an out of order. If you have a younger friend, a sibling, someone who you feel like you should have went first when you are dealing with that type of loss and someone says, well, they're in a better place, man. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I'm not yeah. ready yeah. for that. Yeah. Um, I hope that's the case. But for a single mom who just lost her, her husband and the sole provider, She needs him here. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so she may be thinking like that. And we can talk about this a little bit. Sometimes those words can plant seeds of resentment. Mm. Yeah. Because you can. Yeah. When you say resentment, let me make sure I'm going on the same path as you. Let's 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 all get on the same path. When you say resentment, are you saying resentment toward God? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Because. 
if you're telling me during this process that God felt like it was better to take that provider, that spouse that I love, that father figure, or that wife, mother figure, or whatever it is from me, and I just don't understand that. I don't understand why absolutely that can happen. So let's 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 take it a step further. Okay. So we 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 have the whole they're better in a, they're in a better place, but do you have some people that that feel like that 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 to to kind of like knock it out the park? They say something along the lines of God must have needed them more than you. Yeah. Now now okay, granted. Let, let's say this. Mm -hmm. If you've ever said these words before, it's not it's not because we've said these words before. We're not saying this to bash anybody for trying to be there for someone or comfort someone. We're raising a discussion and topic of are there better better options when it comes to your choice of words? Yeah. And also, as always, biblically, where does it say that? Where is it that God says that he needs you? more than someone else in, in, uh, in a lot of these things people feel like they're scriptural so we got a couple of things with the, the the saying they're in a better place i can see where they've they've gotten some scriptural reasons for thinking that mm -hmm. when jesus was talking to the criminal on the cross he said today you'll be with me in, in paradise heaven. yep right so that's better that that's sounds better, better to me so All it right. does uh so if, but that's still based on the assumption that, okay, we're not Jesus, so we right. can't tell them that, but that's still based on the assumption that they were living their life exactly. in accordance. Now, here's the thing, too. If Jesus say today you're going to be with in paradise, bro, you're you going to be you there. Good. I, you, I need you, you to come tell me that. Yeah, I don't know what happened, whatever. <laughs> and so there's some people like, oh, I'm, I'm saved like the criminal on the cross. First of all, you ain't a criminal on the cross. And if Jesus told you personally, I can't tell you nothing, no, no, no different. But... Yeah. So we get some of that. And then Paul talked about, you know, it'd be better for me to go and be with the Lord, but it's better for you that I stay here. Yeah. So Paul sort of talked, not sort of, Paul definitely that, talked yeah, about absolutely. that sort of thing. So you, you have that. But this idea of God, <laughs> God needed, needed them yeah. more. We serve the God of all creation who lives in perpetual perfection. Yeah. Always perfect all the time yeah that means never in need as a matter of fact i'll find a verse god says if i were hungry i wouldn't ask you yeah like what, i don't need we, anything from yeah, you yeah what can we give him right 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 so let me let me get you a verse i believe in that you gotta have the verse yeah i would say if so so why, why are you getting that so i i, I love i love where you're going with that because i f again i feel like that um Everyone's main intent is to console, to comfort, to provide a sense of peace for them. You know, that's what yep. we want to do. We, we don't want anyone to be going through that grieving process. And we want to reassure them that, you know what, things will get better. Yep. That's, that's, the initial, yep. that's the initial thought process. Um, but as I think back and what, what sparked this uh, conversation... As I think back and I think about times where I lost someone and I've heard and I heard that it upset me. Yeah. Because I didn't want them not to be here with me. You yeah. know, I didn't want them not to be here with me. And I wasn't even thinking from the aspect of that whether or not they were living their lives the way they, they should or shouldn't be. I was just caught in the moment of that my life has altered. My life has changed because this person is no longer here. Yeah. And then it's, years go by, I'm like. Then I'm, as, as you know, I'm kind of like, life goes on a little bit. I'm like, why did that person say that to me? How yeah. dare how dare they yeah. say that to me, you know? But did you find a scripture? Yeah, absolutely. So that's in Psalms chapter 50, verse, oh man, Psalms are so good. It specifically says it in verse 12, where God says, if I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. So just this idea that God would need your loved one more than you is I, I don't it's not it's not right it's not scriptural and it's of no comfort yeah so 
there's people who will say it, and I've had people say it to me, and it was it was definitely not appreciated. And so we're talking about those seeds of resentment. It, it makes me resent that person. Yeah. And if and it, I resent them because I know it's not true. Yeah. If I thought it was true, I would resent that type of God. Yeah, of course. You took my loved one because you needed them. How in the world could you need them more than me? Like, what are you even saying? Yeah. So. I feel like these things that are said, they need to be grounded in truth. Yeah. Lies are a comfort to a fool. Mm. Lies are no real comfort. And even if they were a temporary comfort, <coughs> when you learn they're not true, I think that's where more resentment, more yeah. bitterness, more disenfranchisement yeah if if you are saying this stuff as a christian you're supposed to represent you know the god of all creation you, you need to get your facts right absolutely so let's take it let's take it down this path so let's you know we'll step away from you know the loss of someone let's take it down the, the path and the journey of everyday day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. we all go through stuff and to kind of set a different scenario different scene um, let's say that you're going through a lot and it's stress, yep. a lot of stress on you, you know, um, lost your job, car issues, financial issues. And, you know, you just you just venting, you just venting to someone. Yeah. And that that response of. That seems to be the norm that you get that response of. But God won't place more on you than you can handle <laughs> or or. He wouldn't have gave it to you if he didn't think you was prepared for it or able to handle it. Okay. Now, you said something that I want to start with, that we serve a God that is all-knowing, that's powerful, that's mighty, that doesn't need anything from us. Right. But wants to give us everything. Yeah. I went through a depression going on a year and a half two years ago and during that time i can probably count on both hands how many times somebody said to me he knew that you could handle it and i'm thinking to myself like why do you feel like those are the type of words that's gonna get me out of this funk you know what i'm saying like it, it really was a, a bad situation but as i came out of it and i'm looking back at it one of the things that came to my mind was was that I will make sure that when someone's going through something, I got to choose my words wisely because yeah. when I leave them, if I leave them with the word saying that I, I'm encouraging you to pray, I'm encouraging you to go to God, I'm saying God's going to take care of you, but then I'm leaving you with, well, he, he, he wouldn't have gave it to you if, you if he didn't think you wasn't, if you couldn't handle it. It's kind of like, Okay, but you're telling me to pray and take it away, but you didn't. But now you're telling me he's giving it to me because I can handle it. So which one is it? <laughs> which <Right>. one is it? <laughs> Please let me know. Yeah, and this is such a this is such a difficult one because the the best lies have some truth in them, mm -hmm. and the the best confusing things have some truth in them. Yeah. So. We read, I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I want to say verse 12, maybe verse 13. Um, verse 13, and this is, this is where a lot of people get this. The verse says, no temptation has seized you or overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond yeah, what you can bear. Yeah. But yep. when you are tempted, he will also it's provide a way, way out so that you can endure it. Mm -hmm. And so there's a verse that is speaking specifically of a temptation. Now, a temptation is something I want to do. I'm never tempted mm -hmm. to do something I don't want to yeah. do. Now, I may not want to do it right now. I may not want to do it, however, but there's a part of me that wants to do it. Yeah, absolutely. That's why it's a temptation. Absolutely. And the temptation by itself isn't necessarily good or bad. But what this verse is telling us is that God will not let you be helpless to sin. Mm. 
to where the temptation, I just didn't have a choice. Yeah. I, it, it just did. No, no, no. You're always going to have a way out. Absolutely. And he says that he will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. Mm. And he'll provide a way out. Now, the circumstances, the struggles, the trials, the tribulations, if you want to be religious with our, our verbiage, there's plenty of things that you go through, I go through, that we cannot bear. Mm. We see examples in the Bible of people who were in situations that they could not bear. Now, can we bear them with Christ's help? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. And I believe over and over again, God will let us encounter giants mm. that we cannot defeat. And we can talk about David and Goliath a little bit. When we read that story, we think we're David. Mm hmm. We are not David. Jesus is David. Jesus is David. In yep. that story. Like, yep. I'm, I'm not. And so some people think, oh, you know, that's your Goliath. You know, be the David. Slay the giant. <laughs> no, you don't understand. David yes. had God. Yes. And David God was God. with him. Yes. David David was that guy. Yeah. But King Saul, uh, Eliab, all of David's brothers, all the fighting men in Israel looked at that giant and they knew I go out there, I'm going to get killed. Yep. And they were 100% right. Yep. If you go out there, you will get killed. And so God stepped in and he used David to slay that giant. Jesus steps in and he slays our giant. So what do we do? And it's the same fun. This is, this is not easy. And I'm going to say it like it's simple, but it's not. Well, let me say it like this. It's simple, but it's not easy. And by that, I mean, um, how, do I, how do I beat Usain Bolt in a race? Well, simple. I just got to run faster than him, mm -hmm. right? But I can't. I can't. I, I'm yeah. not that guy. I cannot you, you do know, it. You know, you know how to beat exactly. him. Exactly. And you know what it takes to beat him. Right, but I just can't do it. But physically, you just can't exactly. do it. Exactly. I don't have it in me. I can't do it. Same thing with a lot of these struggles. What we are called to do is remain. To stay. Don't turn and run. Stay and wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. So whether it be depression, anxiety, whether it be a sickness... Again and again, we are called to stay and remain faithful. For how long? He doesn't Until, tell us. Yep. And that's one of the things that's so incredibly difficult. And we see that again and again because he is the one who's going to provide that deliverance however way he sees fit. Mm -hmm. And it's not the way I see fit a whole lot of times. And I got these great plans that I tell God, look, God, I got it all mapped yep. out. Look. Here we go. And just the plan. Got a different Boom. plan. There we go. Just, 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 just sign. Yep. Just sign on the dotted line. This is a great plan. Mm -hmm. Like I even factored in some other people. Look, this is the part where you get some glory. Mm -hmm. You know, this person over here is gonna be uh, reached. You know, like we, uh, like, I'm we, learn. like, like yeah. we can, like we can outthink Jesus. Right. Like we, I think God's plan for right. us. Like we really can. Yeah. But I love what you're saying because it's like, you know. Everything that you're saying, it ties back into the first thing, you know, they're in a better place. We have this plan with this person that we that that ends up leaving us for, you know, they end up passing away or whatever. But we have these plans with them. We were supposed to go take this vacation. We were supposed to, you know, um, retire together and do all this stuff. Yeah. But the Lord saw fit that, you know what, this is my plans. These are the plans that, that, that I have. Yeah. And you said that we are, you said something key that I really want them to, 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 to stay on. You said that we are supposed to sit and remain and, to, and stay in that situation because that's where God wants us to be. Yeah. But how do you get to the point where you're okay with doing that? Oh, that's a great question. Because, you know, <laughs> it's easy It's easy to say, you know what, when you're not going through it, you know, in just a regular podcast environment, it's easy for us to sit here and say, you know what, hey, viewers, stay. Whatever you're going through, sit and stay. But for everybody that's watching right now or that's listening right now, if we were to leave them as we wrap up, if we were to leave them with some type of encouragement, because they might be going through their stay moment right now. You know, I'm about getting real with y'all right now. Yeah. They might be going in there and they might be going through their stay moment right now. 
What words of encouragement? What do we say to those people if we're not going to say, oh, they're in a better place or God won't play some more you can, what, what, than you can handle? What, what do we provide as comfort? All right. So what we provide is what the word says. Mm. That in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Amen. Who've been called according to his purpose. And, Absolutely. And you can, you can continue to read more. This idea of staying and remaining. Sometimes you don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. I've been through some things, man, where it was grief upon grief. And I did not want to go. <coughs> uh, I'll give you an example. This is a funny. This will be a little bit lighthearted. Man, one time I got invited to go out on a ship to basically have dinner and party. It was a company function. It was all paid for. I'm a young, broke college student. And we went out into international waters. The water was choppy. I got sick. Maybe about 35, 40 minutes in, I got sick. And I mean, I am losing everything in my stomach over the side of the rail four or five times. I got a fever. I'm cold. Wow. I'm sweating. Uh, I'm shivering. I ended up buying a really big sweater. And it was just absolutely miserable. I wanted nothing more than to get off that boat. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I hated every minute of it. There's other people who were having a good time, but I'm miserable. I wanted to get off the boat, but I didn't jump overboard. <laughs> okay. I didn't jump overboard. And I say this because there's times where I'm going through things in my life that I want this to stop mm -hmm. right now, but I don't jump overboard. That means I don't leave the Lord because as bad as it is on that boat, Without him, it's worse. And you know it. You know exactly where it is. So I'm on the boat. I'm looking at the waves. It's nighttime. It's dark. This is international water. That water is deep. Mm -hmm. I'm 100% guaranteed to die mm -hmm. in that water. If I, if I stay in that water, they don't haul me out. I guarantee, I'm 100% I'm not going to make it. I'm 100% not going to make it without Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I remain, what's my other option? Yeah. If it's bad with Jesus, it's hopeless without, without him. And then here's, here's the other part that's, that's good, because I did have a, a choice where I could jump off that boat. Right. Mm -hmm. I give you this. Uh, I'm flying an airplane. I don't like flying. I don't, I'm not in control. I like to think I'm in control, but I know I'm not in control when I'm flying. And, and the plane hits some turbulence. Now, I've been praying this whole time. All right, Lord, come on now. We've we, 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 we been talking about this. we got to plan this. we here, this, man. Take this, care this, of me. This turbulence stuff, now, I ain't, I ain't with that, Lord. And so we we bouncing a little bit, and it's getting rough, and it's getting rough, and it's getting rough. I can't jump out the plane. Mm -mm. You gotta I'm on see, the plane. You have to sit. You have to stay. Mm -hmm. And so even though maybe there was a choice to jump out of the boat, God is putting me in situations whether it be a job, whether it be a family member, whether it be some some health issues to where I can't leave even if I want to. Mm -hmm. And so what are my choices? And that's that's the grace of God, by the way, when he has allowed or orchestrated the situation. He can do either one he see fit to do. Mm -hmm. He can put me in that situation where I'm miserable, where I'm crying out to him, where I don't know because the situations get real. Where if God don't show up. I'm not going to make it. Yeah. I have no choice but to remain. And while I'm there in that situation that I don't want to be in, the only option is to cry out to God. The yeah. only option is God. And when we're in a situation where if God doesn't show up, we won't make it. Those are the times where you don't have to wonder, well, Lord, what should I do? You got no choice but yeah. to cry out to the Lord yeah. until he sees fit to provide some deliverance and his timing is not my time. I love everything that we've talked about today. Um, just in, just to kind of bring everything together. Again, this conversation wasn't birth on the fact that we want to bash anybody for wanting to provide comfort for people. That's right. not what we're saying. <sighs> More along the lines of that. We won't, we really want to encourage you guys to get to a point in your relationship with Christ to where when these be still and stay in that moment situation happens, 
you trust the Lord enough. You love the Lord enough to know that this is exactly where he wants me to be. To understand that, you know, OK, this is a tough time right now. I'm going to pray to God. I'm going to ask God for guidance, but I'm going to be still because I know that as as Anthony said, I have no other options but to endure this turbulence because the other the other option I have ain't it's not it's not where God wants me to be, because if it, if that was the option that he wanted me to be, I would be there. So this is my current situation, loss of a loved one, depression, anxiety, financial situations, bills, whatever that circumstance is, your be still moment, your opportunity to be there where God is going to utilize you. How do we get to that point to where we say, you know what, I trust you, Lord. And that's what the encouragement is, is that in the whole point of the podcast, the whole point of the videos, the whole point of everything that we do. Everything that we do is to encourage you and to encourage each other and remind each other that we're going to have those moments. But the Lord will never forsake us. He's going right. to always be he's going to always be there with us. So that's the encouragement to you guys as you're listening to this, whatever platform it is. Um, any closing words that you want to give them before we yeah. wrap it up? I appreciate you allowing for this conversation. I would say when we're dealing with someone who is grieving, going through a difficult time, being there without the words. Mm, just listen. Yes, just be there. And that's if hard. You, it is hard. If you got to say something, I love you. I'm here for you. Yeah. I'm praying. And then shut up. <laughs> a, whole, a little shut up go a long way yeah, because yeah. you cannot talk them out of this situation. Yeah. You cannot talk them into peace and to comfort. They have to go through that grieving process. Now you can mess it up. You can mm -hmm. say things that are going to be hurtful. So I love you. I'm here for you. I'm praying for you, especially if there's someone who is a person of faith, but be physically there without the platitudes, without the, Oh, I know what you're going through. No, you don't. Even if you lost the same person, um, it could be your family member too. Everybody's looking at it from a different perspective. So yeah. be there. Yeah. Quiet, uh, physically there, spiritually there. That's the best thing that we can do, I believe, for those who are grieving. And that, and that goes, that listening and being there and just listening goes a long way in so many different yeah, categories. Really I mean, does. we don't have the time to get on that soapbox, but, but I'm telling you, just... It's so many times in my life that I wish I could go back and just listen and not open up my mouth. And I'm like, man, I, I would have, it would have went a whole lot better if I would have just listened. But we, we definitely appreciate you guys for, um, if you, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you guys so much. Remember, Dangerous Doctrine is down in my description section. Make sure you guys click that link, follow that page, um, and check him out. Um, you're going to get some real talk on there. So make sure that you're prepared for that, but you're going to definitely get the word. And if you are listening on the podcast, um, on any other platforms, make sure you guys follow that as well. But we're going to get out of here. We appreciate you. Thank you guys so much. Y'all know the saying man. Rock what you like. Now what's hype. And remember everything that we talk about is just bait. Wait for us to share our faith. We're going to catch our next video. Peace. No truth is a deadly venom to a man perishing, but to a man willing to live is like medicine. medicine. If you want to live, then you got to die. Are you looking for the truth or an alibi? True, true, true.